Good evening. On behalf of NASCAR, we want to welcome all the fans here to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. We also want to extend our welcome to those who are watching us live on speed and following along on Sirius XM NASCAR radio on NASCAR.com and through social media. If you're on Twitter tonight, we ask you to please join the conversation by using hashtag NASCARHOF. To Winston Kelly and the entire NASCAR Hall of Fame team, congratulations on a great year. Thank you for all you do to preserve the history of this great sport. Uh, we're always proud to come into this building. Before we begin tonight, we want to uh, extend our thoughts and prayers uh, to those devastated in the, in the storms in Oklahoma this week. Um, we invite NASCAR Nation tonight to join NASCAR and the American Red Cross by making a donation by visiting redcross.org or sending a text the Red Cross by texting Red Cross to 90999. Before we uh, make the announcement tonight, I want to provide just a general overview of the process that brought us to this point. As a reminder, to be eligible, a driver must have participated in NASCAR competition for a minimum of 10 years and or be retired for a minimum of three years. For non-drivers, individuals must have worked within the industry for 10 years. Earlier this year, the 21-person nominating committee submitted 25 names for consideration. The 25 most nominated names were determined and announced last month. At that point, fan voting began on NASCAR.com. All of those votes have been tabulated. They account for one vote, and they were factored into the announcement that you're going to hear in a few moments. Finally, this afternoon, 54-member voting panel convened, debated, discussed, and ultimately voted. Only one vote was required this year. There was not a tie for the fifth position as there was last year. The voting today has been overseen by the accounting firm of Ernst & Young, and their team has been led by Lauren Harju, who will now come to the stage with the sealed envelopes. They've done a great job, and we appreciate their service. And here now to announce the five new inductees, please welcome NASCAR Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Brian France. Good evening. You know, this is uh, always uh, one of the most interesting days uh, of the year for me. I'm privileged to be part of, uh, of the voting panel. And like every year, the list of 25 nominees all, in my view, one day will be in the Hall of Fame. But tonight, it'll just be five. And the panel, as earlier discussed, had a spirited discussion about uh, just which five they are and I'm excited to welcome him into the Hall of Fame. He was called today the smoothest driver in NASCAR by Richard Petty. Tim Flock is going to be in the Hall of Fame. NASCAR's golden era was shaped by men who seemed larger than life. One of the sport's first great champions was Tim Flock. With a monkey riding shotgun, Flock was equal part sportsman and showman. One of the smoothest race car drivers I ever seen. It was not spectacular. He just got the job done. Tim Flock in number 86 wants to run in front, moving through the field like a veteran at 115 miles an hour. Through the south turn for the last time, and down the long beach straightaway, Flock's Mercury is smooth as ever. He was the yardstick. What he was able to accomplish amazed not only the fans, but even his competitors. Flock's 1955 season was the stuff of legend. 18 wins, 32 top fives, and 39 races. Tim was always kind of the, the kid that you wanted to pull for. And after a while, he got so dominant, you didn't want to pull for him all that much anymore. The youngest brother of Bob and Fonty Flock, Tim won 39 races and two championships in just seven full-time seasons. The next, next inductee was undoubtedly the finest man to turn a wrench in the history of NASCAR. Maurice Petty will be in the Hall of Fame.
Maurice Petty's hands were the hands that made the Hemi famous in NASCAR. For three decades, he coaxed more from an engine than anyone else in the NASCAR garage. Whether he was tuning for a super speedway or for the shortest dirt track on the circuit, Maurice Petty knew how to engineer success with winning power plants from Plymouth, Dodge, Ford, Oldsmobile, Buick, Pontiac, and Chevrolet. A master mechanic, he was part of the foundation of Petty Enterprises that created the most dominating team in NASCAR history. The dynasty celebrated all-time records of more than 200 wins, 27 wins in a season, 10 wins in a row, seven Daytona 500 wins, seven championships all coming out of the shops in Level Cross, North Carolina, where Chief would do his magic. In addition to wins with his brother Richard, his engines also powered victories for Lee Petty, Buddy Baker, Marvin Panch, Jim Pascal, and Pete Hamilton. Maurice becomes the fourth member of the Petty family to be nominated for membership in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, following his older brother Richard, Father Lee, and his cousin Dale Inman, all members of the NASCAR Hall of Fame. He won races on NASCAR's biggest stage multiple times. He's the champion, and he'll join his father. Dale Jarrett is going to be in the Hall of Fame. For Dale Jarrett, the climb to the pinnacle of NASCAR came with patience, persistence, and the perfect preparation meets opportunity kind of luck. The second generation driver had the steady guidance of a Hall of Fame father who knew the value of every facet of the sport. Finishing in the top six in the championship standings for the Nationwide Series for six consecutive years laid the groundwork for his move to the cup level. An opportunity with the Hall of Fame member Wood Brothers team opened the door to his first career win at Michigan in 1991. Over the next 16 years, driving for Joe Gibbs Racing and Robert Yates Racing, Jarrett would build his Hall of Fame resume with victories in the sport's premier events. Dale Jarrett's gonna win the Daytona 500! Three wins in the Daytona 500, two wins in the Brickyard 400, as well as a win in the Coca-Cola 600. Skilled at every type of track, his 32 career wins span 16 different speedways. The crowning achievement of Jarrett's career came in 1999, when he captured the Premier Series Championship, becoming only the second father-son combination in NASCAR history to earn that accomplishment. At the end of his driving career in 2008, Jarrett made a smooth transition to the broadcast booth to use his decades of knowledge to continue to expand the reach of the sport. He was one of the most fiercest short track competitors in his career. Jack Ingram is going to join the Hall of Fame. If any race car driver ever deserved the nickname Iron Man, it was Jack Ingram. Ingram made his mark on the short tracks of the Carolinas, Virginia, and Tennessee racing in NASCAR's rough-and-tumble late-model sportsman division. Night after night, Ingram would rage war against the likes of Sam R. and countless other short track heroes. Ingram won three straight NASCAR late-model sportsman championships from 1972 to 1974. When the series reorganized to become the NASCAR Bush Series in 1982, Ingram became the first champion, a feat he would repeat in 1985. Ingram ended his career in what is now known as the NASCAR Nationwide Series with 31 victories, which stood as a record until 1997.
He was one of the sport's early pioneers. Had a nickname from baseball that he carried on into NASCAR. Fireball Roberts is now in the Hall of Fame. Fireball warms up his fork, then cranks one on. Edward Glenn Roberts earned the nickname Fireball on the baseball diamond. But it was in NASCAR where he was a hit with the fans and a gem on the track, winning 33 races. I always thought that Fireball was the first superstar our sport had. Fireball Roberts in Ford number 22 goes high, wide, and handsome to move up a notch. He had a flair. Great race driver, hard charger, maybe fit into the category of Junior Johnson and Curtis Turner in that respect. Fireball was a firecracker at Daytona, where he won seven times, including the 1962 Daytona 500. And Fireball gets a checkered flag. His crew is jubilant. Roberts and his Pontiac wheels into the winner's circle. 500 miles at an average speed of 152.9 miles an hour. An amazing achievement for driver, car, and equipment. Even without a championship, Fireball Roberts is a NASCAR legend. Congratulations to the newest class of Hall of Famers. We will celebrate their enshrinement in the NASCAR Hall of Fame on Wednesday, January 29th, 2014, live on Fox Sports 1 as part of the annual media tour and industry events. Finally, we want to just announce that make you aware of the Squire Hall Award for NASCAR Media Excellence. Voting will begin on that in June. We intend to announce that at the races this year at the Daytona International Speedway. Thanks again for everyone being here tonight. We look forward to seeing you back here in January for the enshrinement. And once again, congratulations to the class of 2014. Thank you. Good night.